Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming out. So, like Justin said, my talk is on getting Hadoop, Hive, and HBase up and running in less than 15 minutes. My name is Mark Grover. I work as a software engineer at Cloudera. Uh, there will be a demo in this presentation, and uh, the code that I used for the demo is available on my GitHub profile. It's github.com slash Mark Grover. So feel free to check it out during the presentation, after the presentation, whenever you feel like. All right, let's get started. So a little about me. I'm a contributor to Apache top level project called Big Top. That's uh, what we are gonna talk about mostly in this presentation. Uh, I'm also a contributor to another project called Apache Hive. There will be a little bit of Hive stuff in this presentation. As I said before, I'm an engineer at Cloudera. So this presentation is not about me. It's about my buddy Bart. Bart, not too long ago, heard that big data rocks, right? So he wanted a piece of it. He wanted a big chunk. So he did some Google searching try to figure out what the whole big data thing is all about. And he heard of this elephant called Apache Hadoop, right? So it turns out that Apache Hadoop is a distributed batch processing system. It allows you to run large scale data manipulation queries on commodity hardware and scale just by adding more nodes to the cluster. Right, so I'm guessing most of you have heard of Hadoop or tried to install it, felt some pain, um, is that the case? With a show of hands, how many of you have heard of Hadoop? All right. How many of you have tried to install Hadoop? All right. Okay, so for that was a sizable chunk who have heard of Hadoop but haven't tried to install Hadoop, and that's perfectly the audience I'm looking for here. So Hadoop is divided into two layers. I'm not gonna go into very deep details, but the lower layer is the storage layer. It's the HDFS layer. It provides robust, scalable storage that's fault-tolerant, rack-aware, you store your data on it. Um, and then the top layer, as you see, is MapReduce layer. That's the compute layer. That will perform the computation on it. Anyways, moving on. So Bart goes to Hadoop's website and tries to figure out how he's gonna install Hadoop, right? So he goes to apache.org slash Hadoop and reads the instructions, and these are the instructions he finds. He finds that he has to go download the Hadoop tarball, create a bunch of working directories that Hadoop's gonna store some temporary data in and read it from there. He's gonna populate some config files that will set up the cluster in a mode called pseudo distributed mode. That's the mode where when you're installing Hadoop on only one machine, that's the mode you need to run Hadoop on. Then he has to format the name node, start the Hadoop demons, and pray to God that his MapReduce job works, right? So note that these are all logical steps. It's not like one command that you run that will populate your configs. You actually have to go manually populate these configs. So he tries this, and of course, he sees this error in red. It says Java home not set, right? So it turns out that he forgot to set a whole bunch of environment variables that he needs to set before he tries to run Hadoop. Wait, so he does that, but then he gets this other error. It says permission denied. Your user does not have right permissions to the root directory, and the permissions are this, uh, right? So it turns out that he has to create a bunch of directories on HDFS before he launches the yarn demons. Finally, he's able to run a MapReduce job. But this is a really frustrating process. I mean, you would hope there is a one-click install sort of method or one script install method to install your Hadoop in HDFS and MapReduce, but there isn't. So what do we see? Wouldn't it be nice to have an easier process to install and configure Hadoop? So next thing, Hadoop is like this framework that allows you distributed computation. Hive is another top-level project that will provide you a SQL front end, will compile your SQL-like queries into MapReduce, and then return the results, right? So Bart finds that Hadoop and MapReduce on its own is not great for him. He wants um, Hive to be installed on top of Hadoop. So he goes to the Hive mailing list, right? He says, howdy, Hivers. Can you tell me if the latest version of Hadoop that I installed on my laptop will work with the latest version of Hive that you have available on your website? And the Hive dude replies on the Hive mailing list, right? He says, we only tested the latest version of Hive with an older version of Hadoop. But the new version should work, right? And I push should in red because every time I hear should on mailing lists, it's a red flag, right? Okay, so Bart tries it out and tries it, oh my god, another error, right? So at this point, it's ready to kill somebody. So wouldn't it be nice if somebody actually spent the effort in integration testing all these projects, right? So there are like 10 different versions of Hive available, 10 different versions of Hadoop available. Has someone even tried to even test 
you know, particular versions to each other and see if they work. So what do we see? We see two problems. First, installing and deploying Hadoop and related projects is complicated. Second, there's a lack of integration testing between different versions of these projects. And Apache BigTop is the project that solves these exact two problems. So what is BigTop? It makes two things. It makes, you guessed it, makes installation and configuration easier. And it, makes, it does integration testing amongst various projects so they work very nicely with each other. So here's about BigTop. BigTop is a top level Apache project. It generates packages for various distros. So you will get Debian and RPM artifacts of Hadoop and Hive and HBase and Scoop and Flume and you name it. And these artifacts are integration tested with each other. So you can rely on these artifacts, install them on your cluster, and you know, seriously rely on them to work. And not what happened with Bart when he tried to use the latest version of Hive with the latest version of Hadoop, right? BigTop also provides deployment code. So this is code that's you know, code like Puppet code, Puppet recipes, that you can use to deploy artifacts on your clusters. We also distribute convenience artifacts. So these are Hadoop Conf sudo. That's the package name. So all you do when you had to install a sudo distributed Hadoop cluster on your laptop is go ahead and install this package. And that's your very familiar sudo app get install Hadoop Conf sudo. And it will install Hadoop on your machine, right? And lastly, and I mentioned before, it does integration testing. So you have some sort of reliability and reliance on the packages you're installing. It's just not something you just directly pulled off Apache and hope it works, right? I, my impression is that the upstream projects do a really good job of making sure of unit testing what they are actually contributing to the community, but they aren't necessarily per particular about testing all versions of their component with the other project they interact with, right? So here's a recap of what Bart had to do when he was installing Hadoop through tarballs from Apache. Right, download the tarball, create working directories, populate configs, format the name nodes, start Hadoop daemons, set environment variables, create directories in HDFS, and hope it works. This is no longer required. Now we have a five-step process that even a code monkey can run. Right? Note that these are all actual instructions. So you do sudo app get install Hadoop con sudo. Sudo service, you start your name node, you start your data node, and you initialize the HDFS, and you're all set. OK. So I'm not all talk. We'll do a live demo of how this works. If it doesn't work, we'll just pretend the demo never happened. <laughs> that will just corroborate my case that Hadoop is, in fact, harder to install. All right, so what I have here is a Vagrant VM. Uh, this is a clean VM. has nothing on it except Java. OK, so Java's there. But if I type Hadoop, there's nothing called Hadoop. All right. And I swear to God, I did not install it. It's not in the path. It's not there. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, all these instructions are, by the way, on the Big Top Wiki page. But Ubuntu comes with repositories that you can install stuff from. We would love for Ubuntu to come with a repository for Big Top, right? So all I had to do was do sudo app get install this package from Big Top. But it's not there. So first of all, we need to add a repository on my, this Lucid box to add a repository where it can pull big top artifacts from. But before then, Ubuntu needs to trust that repository. So we'll go ahead and add a key. So I'm going to copy paste this command. Essentially getting the big top key from archive.apache.org and adding it on the app list. So now we trust the big top repository. And then the second thing I'm going to do is get this file called where did it go? Sources.list. That's going to contain where we're going to pull the artifacts from. So let's go look at that. Sources.list.d, big top home file list. So in here, we have an Amazon S3 bucket where our big top artifacts reside. And I just told app that you should be pulling the artifacts from there. Anyways, uh, that's read only. So just because I added a new repository, I need to do sudo add get update for for Ubuntu to remember the repository. And after that, we will be done with the Linuxy stuff and move on to the real mumbo jumbo here. Anyways, so it's adding the repository. All right, sweet. 
So now next step is our installing of that package. So sudo apt-get install hadoop conf sudo. All right, do I want to install this? I sure do. Okay, this is gonna take a while, right? So it needs to install a whole bunch of packages. These are big top utilities packages, Hadoop packages, HDFS packages, MapReduce packages, and Yarn packages. So I'm gonna let this simmer in the back burner and move on with my presentation. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about integration testing while our demo is trying to install Hadoop in the background. Most individual projects, as I said before, don't perform integration testing. They do a real good job of doing unit testing, not necessarily integration testing. An example of that is HBase, which is a distributed database on top of Hadoop, does not presently have a release tarball that works with Hadoop 2, which is the latest version of Hadoop, right? So you can't download from anything from hbase.org, uh, hbase.apache.org, that will work with Hadoop 2 out of the box. But BigTop tries to solve that exact problem, right? It will make a, a binary for HBase that will run directly with Hadoop 2. But if you think about it, it's a complex combinatorial problem, right? I mean, you've got 10 different versions of Project X that you want to test with 15 different versions of Project Y. How are you going to do this n squared problem? How are you going to solve it, right? And the short answer that we do in, in Big Top is we don't. We pick particular versions that are latest and greatest at that time, and we test them together. So Big Top has quarterly release model. Every quarter, we'll look at what is the latest, greatest version of Hadoop, Hive, HBase, Scoop, Flume, whatever. Um, we'll pull it all out, integration test it, and we work directly with the upstream projects to perform various levels of testing. So BigTop has integration testing um, that will do platform, you know, distro level, upgrade level testing, and make sure all these components work together. So if you think about what Debian did in Linux space, before Debian there was you know, some software that ran on the Linux kernel, and then there was a kernel. Debian came together, put these all together, in a cutting edge distribution and allowed other distributions to derive from it. So out came Ubuntu, out came Nopix, right? And BigTop is trying to do exactly the same thing. Before BigTop, there was a Hadoop and there was a bunch of software, Hive, HBase, Scoop, Flume, that ran on Hadoop. But with BigTop, you're gonna package it in a cutting edge repository that other repositories, that other distributions can derive from. And examples of those distributions are, you know, Cloudera's distribution or Hortonworks distribution or um, Van Disco's distribution. And so here's an example of companies that use BigTop. They clearly fall in two categories. First category of companies that rely on BigTop's distribution to create their own distribution. Example of that is Cloudera and Van Disco. Other set of companies that rely on BigTop's deployment code to deploy whatever artifacts they want to deploy, right? An example of that is EMC. They use BigTop's puppet deployment code to actually deploy artifacts on their cluster. All right, so back to our demo. Let's see what's going on there. Whoa, this is really slow. So I was hoping in those three slides, this thing would have downloaded, but apparently the internet connection is slow. So I'm gonna sing a song. No, I'm kidding. Um, let's carry on. So by this time, you've all heard the MongoDB or seen the MongoDB video, right? And we've only talked about installing BigTop on one node, right? I took my laptop and tried to install it on a Hadoop pseudo distributed configuration there. But you ask the question, hmm, is BigTop really scalable, right? And of course, I wouldn't be asking that question if the answer wasn't yes. So the answer is yes. BigTop comes with a whole bunch of deployment recipes. So it obviously comes with artifacts that you can install in a fully distributed cluster, but it comes with deployment code that you can use to deploy things. And that's the example of customers I gave previously. Moreover, the next version of BigTop is gonna have integration with Apache Wir which some of you might know will help you install Hadoop and related projects on you know, Amazon, AWS, or CloudStack, or um, Rackspace, and third party cloud providers. Um, and BigTop will have integration with that to help you do that and install BigTop integration tested artifacts on that as well. All right, so I'm gonna keep going back and forth here to see what my installation progress is like. 98%, all right, you get to hear some more. So why use BigTop? First of all, it's in easier deployment of tested upstream components. Like I said before, there isn't much in integration testing going on between various components in the Hadoop ecosystem, and BigTop does that for you. It will also supply you with uh, puppet recipes. It will supply you um, with convenience artifacts like Hadoop Consuda, which will help you install things uh, in a much more easier fashion than what you get from the upstream components. 
And the third thing, and I think this is more like a meta point, it's a distribution of the community by the community for the community. It sounds like the Constitution, right? But uh, it really is. I mean, you shape how this distribution look. You don't like something, and um, there will be something in the demo you won't like. I'll point it out when, when we get there. Um, all you had to do is, you know, come provide your feedback on the mailing list. Um, you know, if you're willing, provide a patch. We would love to see more patches. And say, you know what, this is really a pain point. We should fix it. Yeah, we totally should, right? There's a lot of sucky things out there in the ecosystem that we'll, uh, we'll be glad to fix. So you really shape how the distribution look like, and I can't emphasize it enough, to, to have your contribution, providing that feedback and providing your contributions to make the deployment and integration testing of the various projects easier. All right, let's see what's going on here. Whew, finally. All right, so we are here. We installed our pseudo distributed configuration package. We need to do some installation. So what happens is in the etsy init.d directory, we are gonna these, get these files. Dupe, hdfs, star files. And we need to initialize these files before we do anything. So sudo service Hadoop HDFS name node init. All right, that will initialize our name node. Then we'll go sudo service Hadoop HDFS name node start. Hopefully that will start things up. All right. And now we need to do the same thing on data nodes. So we'll do sudo service Hadoop HDFS data node start. It would help if I named things correctly. Okay, then we'll start the yarn demons. So Hadoop yarn node manager restart. Yeah, I guess at this point you kind of have to know what you had to start, but uh, if you look at the init scripts that the package installed, these were the init scripts that were installed. Um, so I'm just gonna start all of them. Hadoop yarn resource manager start, restart. All right, so when this command completes, we have started all the, all the components that got installed with that pseudo distributed config package. And if I did a Hadoop fsls command, there's nothing installed right now. So what we have to do is we have to initialize our HDFS. And there is a script that shipped with BigTop that's called very promptly init HDFS. So I'm gonna run that script. Make sure I look at my notes, make sure I didn't forget anything. Okay. All right, so this is creating a bunch of directories, but you don't have to create them manually. The script will do that for you. All right, almost here. Okay, and just to confuse you, I'm gonna restart node managers and, and resource managers. I'll tell you why later. Um, so it turns out that these directories need to be created before you start the node manager and resource manager, and I know that. It's an orchestration problem. Again, that's something that Big Top deployment um, code deals with, but given that I installed the package by hand, um, I'll have to do that manually. Anyway, so the sequence was I install the package, I install, uh, I init HDFS, I start HDFS, then I uh, restart the yarn demons. Uh, and now we are ready to run some MapReduce code and hope it works. Uh, so this is essentially Hadoop comes with this examples jar file that has a bunch of things you can run with. There's a pi job that will let you calculate the value of pi up to a particular precision. So I'm just gonna run that, and that's the Hadoop command. Hadoop jar 
uh, location of where my map producer example jars is, and I want to run the pie job there. And uh, that's like the precision and, and scale that I want to use to calculate the value of pi. So that's going to, all right, so that is right, something's not running. So now you get to see a live debugging session of what's going on. Isn't this exciting? All right, so let's see which services are up and which are not. Hadoop, Yarn, Node Manager status. All right, our Node Manager is dead. Let's see our Resource Manager status. The resource Manager is running, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna try to start the Node Manager again. All right, let's, uh, resource manager is still up. Node manager is running. Okay, let's see if you have better luck. All right, that obviously did not work. Let's see if we have better luck running our Hadoop. Ooh, okay. So, because I ran the job once before, the output directory was already there, so we just had to remove that. Hadoop FSMR. All right, let's try one more time. Okay, finally. I will not embarrass myself. See, that worked. Um, so again, this is an example to show how you would, the job is actually running right now, but this is an example to show how you would you know, install Hadoop and MapReduce on your, um, on your single node laptop, whatever you have. Um, and there is certain steps you have to follow. All these steps are listed on the wiki page, and these are just matter of the inherent complexity that comes with Hadoop, right? You have to start HDFS first, you have to initialize HDFS, so that it creates a bunch of directories, which Yarn is gonna use, and then you start your run demons. So, and then there comes your value of pi, right? So, all this is great, but this is like a very fundamental example. So, let's dig in a little more. We'll install two more projects, Scoop and Hive, all right. So Scoop is this project that lets you pull in things from relational land into Hadoop world and pull out things from the Hadoop world back to relational land. Um, import, export, right? Lucrative business. Hive is a SQL-like layer on top of Hadoop that will take SQL-like queries and compile them into MapReduce and then result, returns the results from whatever MapReduce competition that you did. All right, so while that's being installed, I'm going to see my notes again. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to, what am I going to do? I might just carry on with my presentation. <laughs> Bless you, sir. All right. You know what? I'm going to wait around. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this is I have a data set loaded on this VM. That's from 2000 census of the United States. Um, and it has data of salary information per zip code, right? So it's just a simple data set. Uh, I think maybe 3,000 lines. And it's basically got salary information for various zip codes. This is in MySQL. So we're going to use Scoop to transfer data from MySQL onto um, Hadoop and HDFS. Then we're going to run a query on Hive to see whatever we wanted to see. In this case, we'll see an example of that. So all I'm trying to do is show you with BigTop how easy it is to install artifacts and take a data set that you're very familiar with in MySQL, convert it into Hadoop land, and run a Hive query on top of that. Okay, that was enough filler I've got, so another 25% is gonna be all quiet. Um, all right, so maybe we can browse through the MySQL data that we have. All right, this is almost done. All right, let's go browse through our MySQL data. All right. 
Okay, so here's our table. Zip code incomes. Right, so there's some sort of ID, then a zip code code, then some description, and in the end you see the income, right? So the query I'm gonna run was gonna be select, how about we do average income? Actually, before I even go there, let's do a describe table so you know what the schema looks like. Describe zip code incomes. Okay, yeah, so like I said, ID, zip code, description, description, income. And we're gonna do this query, we're gonna do average sub str, I think it's called, of zip one, three, comma, average income from zip code incomes group by substring zip one, three. So I'm essentially grouping things by regions. To do some sort of analogy with regions, I'm taking the first three letters of the zip code and calling that a region, right? All right, that worked. My SQL isn't all that bad. All right, so look here. Let's go through some data. So, you know, usually it's 30, 28,000 range, 45,000 range, whatever. So you get some answer here. Now we're going to transfer this data onto Hadoop, right? We have our Hadoop running. There's some stuff in HDFS because we knitted it and we ran a pie job. But let's use Scoop to transfer this data from MySQL. All right, but there's a catch. Scoop, thanks to licensing, doesn't come with a MySQL connector. So Scoop uses Java JDBC to connect to MySQL to pull data off. For licensing reasons, we don't ship the connector with Scoop. So first thing you need to do is pull the connector from MySQL website and put it in the appropriate location where Scoop can find it in the class path, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna curl it from MySQL's website. And this is the pain point I was referring to. Like, I mean, we shouldn't really have to do that. Perhaps there should be a script that does that, you know. And th these are the kind of things where you can shape the deployment code the way you wanna see it. I personally see it as a pain point. I hope you do too. Um, and so things like these need to be dealt outside of the parent project. And BigTop is essentially the place to deal with them. Okay, so that download is going on. The next command is just gonna copy it from wherever I copied it to user lib scoop lib. So every project usually has a lib directory where it pulls the stuff, puts in the class path, and we are essentially gonna drop this MySQL connector jar in scoop's class path. You know what? Maybe I should try that again. Oh, yeah. So I was trying to download that in the Etsy and Etsy directory, did without pseudo access. So obviously that was expected. So I changed directory to my home directory. I'm trying to download that again. All right, so that got downloaded. Now I'm gonna copy it over, and we're all set. So now we are ready for our scoop command. I am not a scoop group. Wiki.
Last flag there is hive overwrite. It means if there is a table with that name, if there is a table with that name that ha already has content, uh, you go ahead and overwrite that content, right? Okay, so fantastic. It says hive import com complete, and we go start hive. Again, when I install scoop, I said su sudo app get install scoop and hive. So we have hive ready. We have not even logged on to hive until now. The first thing we do is show tables and and there is the zip code incomes table. How did it get here? Scoop created it for us. So if you wanted to go through this table, it's the same data. You want to do a describe, zip code incomes, it's the same schema, right? So it's got ID, zip, two descriptions, and an income. And if you wanted to run the same query that we ran there, so we wanted to buy a region, group, find average income. So zip13 is actually starting, this is not zero indexed for some reason, substrings and hive and, scoop and, and MySQL are one referenced. So I'm saying take the first three letters, Th three is the length. Um, from zip code incomes. Again, like you can see, hive syntax is really similar to SQL syntax. Group by substring zip13. All right. Okay, so now it's going to launch a MapReduce job. Essentially, Hive uses this job.xml file that it will create, send a bunch of properties, <coughs> compile the MapReduce, and ask Hadoop to, uh, to run this MapReduce job. And Hadoop's going to do all the legwork. Uh, if you wanted to track this job, there's a URL right here. The tracking URL, just go to your browser and look at that URL. It will show you progress of how many percent the job is done. Anyway, so the mappers are 100% complete. The reducers happen. Oh, bingo. We got some data. All right, the same data that we saw in Scoop, uh, sorry, in MySQL is present in Hive. Anyways, so I would want to point out that a lot of people spend days just trying to set up Hive, Scoop, and Hadoop to run together. And with the artifacts that you get from Big Top, this becomes you know, relatively easy. There are obviously plain points, like going and downloading the MySQL jar and putting in the appropriate directory. I mean, how are you going to figure that out, right? But um, there, these are definitely points that we have dealt with in Big Top to make things better. And there's obviously a lot more we can do. And, and that's why we're trying here t to ask you to use Big Top, provide your feedback, tell us about what the pain points are, and if you can, help us fix them. All right, so let's recap. BigTop does two things. Makes installation and configuration of Hadoop projects easier. Second, performs integration testing amongst various projects. So <laughs> if you slept through the entire presentation, you can't remember even a single thing, these are the two things you should remember, right? So if you want to try out BigTop, this is your time. All right, questions. So first of all, before I go into questions, my Twitter account is Mark underscore Grover. Uh, the code for the demo, so the, uh, the data set, and the code that I used to bring up the VM sort of do some basic provisioning before we install Big Top is also on the GitHub profile. All right, so question time. Yes, sir. There is a microphone, just use that, please. Uh, so will Big Top will integration with such as Embarry uh, as a deployment and uh, monitoring provision? So um, there are complementary products at the moment, right? Big Top produces artifacts that uh, projects like Embari or Cloudera Manager could use to install their things instead of using them from Tarballs. But as such, BigTop doesn't, you know, uh, particularly help projects in that way. The idea is to help the community uh, with the installation and deployment projects, and that's people like me or, you know, code like Embari or Cloudera Manager. More questions? So one of the pain points uh, that we went through was uh, just knowing what the right machine selection was. Is there any, uh, is there, are there any efforts on that front? I mean, j just like, you know, <clears throat> what kind of machine should we allocate for, you know, a three machine HBase cluster, you know? And, and I mean, one of the things we found is, is some of the information we got online was, you know, basically wrong you know, or contradictory, like, oh, these machines are too small, this is, oh, no, this is plenty, right. that sort of thing. And, and just keeping, keeping everything up and stable, you know, was, was definitely a huge issue. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And you, are you talking mostly about hardware configurations or these hardware software? configurations? Yeah. Right. Those are usually dictated by um, the upstream project and um, your your workloads, the amount of data you're storing, what kind of queries you're running. So Big Top doesn't necessarily come out with some sort of guidelines that you you do have, but we we do have some sort of hardware level actually specifications. So Big Top artifacts only work with 64-bit machines. We assume that you know if you're using 32-bit, probably not good enough for Hadoop, uh, Java. That's primarily because upstream projects haven't really started supporting, you know, open JDK or uh, things of that nature. But in terms of how much memory requirement or what hardware you require for the particular project, there is not much b Big Top can mandate or does mandate. Uh, but in terms of s hardware architecture, as I said before, 64-bit machines and having the proper Java installed is what we do mandate. Any other questions? We've got one here, Justin. Uh, are there any uh, automated integration tests in the BigTop uh, source repository? Yeah, so the question was, are there any automated uh, tests in the BigTop code base? Yes, there is. Every time a new component gets checked in, we, uh, we ask that you check in integration tests. Um, of course, more tests are always welcome, but uh, it's kind of mandatory for a new component to get added uh, uh, that we get integration tests, because that's kind of the purpose of BigTop, right? Make sure everything integrates nicely. Um, the components have to be Hadoop related in some shape sense. Um, so obviously this includes the really popular ones, Hive, Hadoop, HBase, uh, but also they can be, uh, I search for example, Solar is integrated into Big Top. So most people can't really recognize Solar and Hadoop together, but you know, if it's remotely related, we, we would consider it uh, to be added, integration tested. Well, hey, why not, right? Yeah. More questions? All right, well, thank you for coming. If you have any more questions, there is a Big Top user mailing list. Uh, that gentleman there, Roman, is the VP of the project, so if you don't like something, please blame him. If you do like something, come to me and congratulate me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for attending. Please uh, provide your feedback in the future.